Greeting students, I'm dangerously close to spelling Lord of the Flies as Lord of the Files, so apologies in advance if I do that. Um, you've been introduced to Ralph and Piggy on the island. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves to the island itself as a persona, um, a once beautiful and deadly, but first some revision. Last time you learned the word decisive, which means quick thinking and swift to act. Why is being decisive an important quality in a leader? You're following someone, someone decisive. Why is that a good thing? And you need to know what propriety means. Um, conformity, conforming to rules, basically accepted standards. You are how you are expected to look or behave. You follow standards. You don't let standards drop. Um, prop in French, I think, is clean. Uh, proprietas in Latin is the origin of that. Uh, so, uh, why would you expect a privately privately educated children to behave with a sense of propriety in the 1950s? So these are schools that train the next uh, generation of prime ministers and politicians and uh, diplomats and uh, you know, global statesmen, businessmen, captains of industry, uh, young England. Um, why would you expect them to ex behave with a sense of propriety? And going back to Big Brother, what rules of propriety did Big Brother have in 1984? Why did these rules exist? A lot of questions, aren't there? Uh, so cast your mind back to Big Brother's rules. Clever bit of revision, really. Uh, today, you're going to look at first impressions of Piggy and how Golding uses symbolism for your visuals, we're going to draw something. For your writing, we need a simple list. So number task number one is to visualize the island and what it symbolizes. We'll do that together. And then after I read, I leave you to list five quotations showing Piggy's incorrect use of grammar. I mentioned that some of the boys on the island, most of the boys are from the island, on the island are from schools such as Marlborough College, where uh, William Golding uh, attended, um, but one of one or two of them don't have that refined background. Piggy is an orphan boy, and he doesn't have that relaxed, um, sort of uh, elegant, rounded speech that Ralph does, and most of the other boys in the island do, um, because he's from a a, a, well, a lower class background. I don't know whether he went to the same school, but his parentage isn't as respectable. And it's reflected in his, the way he speaks, his incorrect use of grammar. Last lesson, you made some notes on Ralph and Piggy. That was great. So Piggy's working class status in comparison to Ralph's middle class status is made clear from the start of the chapter. This is done through his incorrect use of grammar. For example, all them other kids but what are the others? Please look out for them as we read together. Let's do that now. Um, so let's leap with increasing speed over to Word. You please how quickly. We left Piggy complaining about, or well, marveling at the damage the plane did to the island has created a scar. Piggy looked up and down the scar. Here we are. Let's just flash through a bit of language that you might find helpful to know before we dive into it. The shore was fledged with palm trees means the um, fledged, a fledgling bird. It's something that's born. It's something that's alive. So it's um, He clasps his hands in apprehension. I think you studied this last time. It means murder. Efflorescence. Um, you know what plankton is, or um, thing that, or glowworms. Those are things that glow with their own energy. So efflorescence means brightness. It's something that has its. its 
light. Uh, specious means deceitful, something that's just surprising. An appearance that's deceptive. So we'll just read those two pages and. So remember, look out for that working class vernacular that Golding. Um, gives to Piggy. You could write it down as we go, Ree. I just fancy to zoom. OK, uh, and this is what the cabin done. The fair boy reached out and touched the jagged end of the trunk. For a moment, he looked interested. What happened to it? He asked. Where's it got to now? That storm dragged it out to sea. It wasn't half dangerous with all them tree trunks falling. There must have been some kid still in it. He hesitated for a moment and spoke again. What's your name? Well, the fat boy waited to be asked his name in turn. But this proffer of acquaintance was not made. The fair boy called Ralph, smiled vaguely, stood up and began to make his way once more toward the lagoon. The fat boy hung steadily at his shoulder. I expect there's a lot more of us scattered about. Y you haven't seen any others, have you? Ralph shook his head and increased his speed. Then he tripped over a branch and came down with a crash. The fat boy stood by him, breathing hard. My auntie told me not to run, he explained, on account of my asthma. Asthma? That's right. It's my breath. I was the only boy in our school what had asthma, said the fat boy with a touch of pride. And I've been wearing specs ever since I was three. He took off his glasses and held them out to Ralph, blinking and smiling, and started to wipe them against his grubby windbreaker. An expression of pain and inward concentration altered the pale contours of his face. He smeared the sweat from his cheeks and quickly adjusted the spectacles on his nose. Them fruit, he glanced round the scar. Them fruit, he said. I expect... He put on his glasses, waded away from Ralph and crouched down among the tangled foliage. I'll be out again in just a minute. Ralph disentangled himself cautiously and stole away through the branches. In a few, few seconds, the fat boy's grunts were behind him and he was hurrying toward the screen that still lay between him and the lagoon. He climbed over a broken trunk and was out of the jungle. The shore was fledged with palm trees. He stood or leaned or reclined against the light and their green feathers were a hundred feet up in the air. The ground beneath them was a bank covered with coarse grass torn everywhere by the upheavals of fallen trees, scattered with decaying coconuts and palm saplings. Behind this was the darkness of the forest proper in the open space of the scar. Ralph stood, one hand against a grey trunk and screwed up his eyes against the shimmering water. Out there, perhaps a mile away, the white surf flinked on a coral reef. And beyond that, the open sea was dark blue. Within the irregular arc of coral, the lagoon was still as a mountain lake, blue of all shades and shadowy green and purple. The beach between the palm terrace and the water was a thick stick, stick, endless, apparently. A thin stick, endless, apparently, for to Ralph's left, the perspectives of palm and beach and water drew to a point at infinity, and always almost visible was the heat. He jumped down from the terrace. The sand was thick over his black shoes and the heat hit him. He became conscious of the weight of clothes, kicked his shoes off fiercely and ripped off each stocking with its elastic guard in a single movement. Then he leapt back onto the terrace, pulled off his shirt and stood there among the skull-like coconuts with green shadows from the palms and the forest sliding over his skin. He undid the snake clasp of his belt, lugged off his shorts and pants and stood there naked, looking at the dazzling beach and the water. He was old enough, 12 years and a few months, to have lost the prominent tummy of childhood, and not yet old enough for adolescence to have made him awkward. You could see now that he might make a boxer, as far as width and heaviness of shoulders went, but there was a mildness about the mouth, his mouth and eyes, that proclaimed no devil. He patted the palm trunk softly and forced at last to believe in the reality of the island, laughed delightedly again, and stood on his head. He turned neatly, onto his feet, jumped down to the beach, knelt and swept a double armful of sand into a pile against his chest. Then he sat back and looked to the water with bright, excited eyes. Ralph! And the fat boy lowered himself over the terrace and sat down carefully, using the edge as a seat. I'm sorry I've been such a time. Them fruit. 
He wiped his glasses and adjusted them on his button nose. The frame had made a deep pink V on the bridge. He looked critically at Ralph's golden body and down at his own clothes. He laid a hand on the end of a zipper that extended down his chest. My auntie. Then he opened the zipper with decision and pulled the whole windbreaker over his head. There. Ralph looked at him sidelong and said nothing. I expect we'll want to know their names, said the fat boy, and make a list. We ought to have a meeting. Ralph did not take the hint, so the fat boy was forced to continue. I don't care what they call me, he said confidently. And so long as they don't call me what they used to call me at school. Ralph was faintly interested. What was that? The fat boy glanced over his shoulder, then leaned towards Ralph. He whispered, they used to call me Piggy. Ralph shrieked with laughter. He jumped up. Piggy, Piggy. Ralph, please. Ralph clasped his hands in apprehension. I said I didn't want Piggy, Piggy. Ralph danced out into the hot air of the beach and then returned as a fighter plane with wings swept back and machine gun Piggy. Chow. He dived in the sand at Piggy's feet and lay there laughing. Piggy. Piggy grinned reluctantly, pleased despite himself. But even this much recognition, so long as you don't tell the others. Ralph giggled into the sand. The expression of pain and concentration returned to Piggy's face. Half a sec. He hastened back into the forest. Ralph stood up and trotted along to the right. Here, the beach was interrupted abruptly by the square motif of the landscape. A great platform of pink granite thrust up uncrum uncompromisingly through the forest and terrace and sand and lagoon to make a raised jetty four feet high. The top of this was covered with a thin layer of soil and coarse grass and shaded with young palm trees. There's not enough soil for them to grow to any height, and when they reached perhaps 20 feet, they fell and dried, forming a crisscross pattern of trunks, very convenient to sit on. The palms that stood still made a green roof, covered on the underside with a quivering tangle of reflections from the lagoon. Ralph hauled himself onto this platform, noted the coolness and shade, shut one eye, and decided that the shadows on his body were really green. He picked his way to the seaward edge of the platform and stood down, looking down into the water. It was clean, it was clear to the bottom, and bright with the efflorescence of tropical weed and coral. A school of tiny glittering fish flickered here and there. Ralph spoke to himself, sounding the bass strings of delight. Wizzo! Beyond the platform, there was more enchantment. Some act of God, a typhoon perhaps, or the storm that had accompanied his own arrival, had banked sand inside the lagoon so that there was a long, deep pool in the beach with a high ledge of pink granite at the farther end. Ralph had been deceived before now by the specious appearance of depth in the beach pool, and he approached this one, preparing to be disappointed. But the island ran true to form, and the incredible pool which clearly was only invaded by the sea at high tide, was so deep at one end as to be dark green. Ralph inspected the whole 30 yards carefully and then plunged in. OK, we'll stop there. So you were looking for signs of Piggy being basically cockney sounding like his grammar isn't as refined and educated as, well, yours or Ralph's. Uh, let's go over to the PowerPoint and draw the island. Where are we? I, I, I think we're about 10 minutes in. So, um, so if you could, with me, just draw the island and its symbolism. What we need first is a large oval shape. Take about half a page and give me the visualisation of some sea around there as well. William Golding uses images to symbolise ideas. For example, the island itself is an allegory for the Garden of Eden and man's behavior and man's descent um, into disobedience. So the island represents the Garden of Eden. And let's introduce uh, the beach. This is where we've found Piggy and Ralph. This is where the boys feel safe. The palm trees fold over into making these seats. And that's where they create this sort of political assembly, as it's called. Uh, so this is where the boys feel safe from the beast and reassured by politics and respect for each other so we can add some more beaches there but it's the one at the bottom we're most interested in and then we've just been introduced to the bathing pool which is where the boys remove inward and outward signs of savagery so literally it's a bathing pool but metaphorically it's this place where the boys go when they want to feel 
like uh, like they've been baptized or cleansed from the savage behavior uh the jungle we need two jungles uh on on either side of the pig run so the jungle is where ralph goes to look for firewood but it's also dangerous it's also as dangerous as it is beautiful so source of food wood and beauty but also dangerous and dark and it reflects the personality of the boys doesn't it these are um the boys are pleasant looking people but they have a dark side uh, the pig run is if you go into the woods you can see uh channels where foxes and and badgers i suppose run around and um they've been smoothed off so this is what the pig run is it's a road for pigs um what does the pig run symbolize uh it's where jack hunts and it's symbolically the path to, to destruction let's add the mountain as well which is uh, where they the boys light a fire and it symbolizes hope and survival and once you've done the mountain let's go over to the this promontory here called castle rock it's at the top of the island and it really it's all the people who are attracted to castle rock are just as harsh and um brutal as the landscape so it's a hard an uncompromising place the stage for savagery it's connected to the island by this a causeway which means a narrow ledge of um land or rock um the scar as you know is where the plane um crashed smashed into the island and um i think the last thing to write down is the ocean which represents freedom or if you like imprisonment but we're saying it's rex represents freedom and calm the boys are away from adults separated by miles of pacific ocean or is it atlantic um so that's it folks uh visualize the island and list five quotations showing piggy's incorrect use of grammar final questions uh, which character whom you've met so far is the most decisive and which of them acts with the bigger sense of propriety you'll remember that ralph pulled his socks up because he for a moment he thought he was in the home counties equally you'll remember that piggy is the last to remove his windbreaker uh it's over to you and we'll see you next time